Hello lovies, welcome back and welcome if you are new to my channel. Today I am doing a DIY on the wooden garland beads from Pottery Born. YouTube creator I am Sharika B found a hack for some of them at her local home goods. However, I have not had any luck in locating them for myself. And so the ones from Pottery Born were a bit expensive, so I decided to DIY them. These are the materials I'll be using for this project. My acrylic go-to paint from Hobby Lobby, a 100 pack of skewers from the Dollar Tree, gloves for the excess paint when handling the beads, a plastic disposable bowl for painting the beads, a plastic tray for the beads to dry. Both of these are from Dollar Tree. An aluminum pan also to be used for allowing the beads to dry cup of water to dilute some of the paint if needed, a spoon for dipping the paint, and the beads from Hobby Lobby. They are $2.99 a pack, but I got them on sale for $1.50. They're the 38 millimeter, so let's get started. I decided to do two bead garlands, one in white and one in black, and I realized that I had a lot of beads because I was placing 24 beads per garland. And so I was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of beads to paint. So I took the lazy way out and it actually worked. So I applied a half a teaspoon of paint in the bowl and put in the wooden beads and kind of did this shake method. And it actually coated the beads. Um, as it coated the beads, I continued to add more beads in to distribute the paint. It gave it a matte look and the shaking method also created a type of texture on the bead, which I absolutely loved. So stay tuned. Now that the beads are evenly coated, I am using four of the skewers for thickness to slide each bead on so that they can rest on the tray, the plastic tray in the background and dry. Now on to the white bead garland. In DIY projects, there's always trial and error. And what I learned with the white bead garland is that the shake method wasn't as successful as it was with the black bead garland. Maybe it's because the white paint is more opaque than the black. Stay tuned and you'll see exactly what I mean.
After realizing that the shake method did not work as well with the white bead garland, again, I took four skewers for thickness and placed the beads onto the skewer. Now the beads that I'm placing on here is not to dry. I'm actually placing them on here so that I can position them on the bowl so that I can hand paint them with a hand brush to smooth out the texture that the shake method created and then proceed with painting the rest of the beads instead of doing the shake method. Here I have placed the beads on top of the bowl and I am using my hand paint brush to smooth out the paint that was um, applied to the beads from the shake method that I attempted to do with the white. Now on to painting the remainder of the beads white for the white bead garland. Here I am using again four skewers for thickness to position the beads. I did realize when I was painting the white beads as they sat across the top of the bowl that they were sliding. So what I did to stabilize the beads was take two additional skewers, one for each side. and place them in. Please be careful because those skewers will get away from you. So what I'm trying to achieve here is stabilization on the bead. So that's what you see me doing here. Now we have completed both sets of beads for each garland. The white is looking fabulous. So is the black and they're just hanging out here to dry. Once they are completely dry, then I'll begin putting them together to create the garland look. I was going between two different materials for assembling the beads together. The black lacing is to the left and here to the right, I have round leather cord. I decided to use the round leather cord
Now that I have assembled the beads, I am tying little loops at the very end. I'm pulling them very taut. It's leather, so it's really malleable, but I'm making sure that I pull it very taut because I don't want to lose any of the beads. Um, I'm securing them so that uh, the holes that are big enough on each end, it will hide where the knot is. I'm twisting them just to make sure that I have enough flexibility in them before securing the rest of the knots. I hope you enjoyed this DIY project. It was very fun to make. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. When you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get immediate notifications of future content. See you in the next video. Bye.